So if you ever asked yourself, what is this yellow spot on my eye? Or wanted to know why they sometimes call this thing a surfer's eye. In this video, we're gonna review the signs, symptoms, and treatment for a pinguecula versus pterygium, both of which are very common things that happen on the eye. So let's take a look. Hey, what's up? Dr. Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show. Now, if you've ever looked at your eye up close in front of a mirror, you may have noticed a yellow or pink spot kind of growing at either the three or nine o'clock positions on that white part of your eye usually probably more prominent, more toward the nose. Or perhaps you've seen kind of this pink tissue growing from the white part of the eye on over the cornea, kind of going toward the center of your pupil. Those pink or yellow spots that grow on the white part of the eye are often diagnosed as what is called a pinguecula and is believed to be caused by environmental exposures to wind, dust, and UV light exposure. They also just tend to occur more often with age. Now let's compare a pinguecula to this image here. This is called a pterygium, but is often commonly referred to as a surfer's eye. This appears as a white, pink, or red growth of tissue that extends from the white part of the eye onto the clear surface of the eye in the front that we call the cornea. If you or a friend have one of these pterygiums and you watch it over time, you may see it grow very slowly and extend over the eye. Now both the Pinguecula and a pterygium are interestingly found more often in men, but are believed to occur due to UV light exposure, irritation, and the presence of inflammation on the surface of the eye. They are found on both the temporal and the nasal side, but interestingly enough, they are noticed more often developing on the nasal aspect of the eyes. There's three different theories of why we think that it occurs more often toward the nose. The first of which is that sunlight would bounce off the side of somebody's nose and then just kind of reflect it into the nasal aspect of the eye. The second theory was that light would come in from the temporal side here, and then the light would internally reflect kind of like a prism through the cornea, and then that would kind of focus more on the nasal aspect. That theory has recently just kind of been disproven in a recent study in 2020. And then they suggested that perhaps it's that inflammatory proteins and cytokines all flush toward the nasal aspect of the eye, toward the drainage canal, and the presence of those inflammatory proteins are kind of aggravating and causing things like pinguecula and pterygium. Which personally, I think that final theory makes the most sense. Now, both the pinguecula and pterygium are more commonly diagnosed in people that live closer to the Earth's equator, largely because the geography, UV light, is a lot more intense there. Now, you may be wondering why a pterygium is often called a surfer's eye, and it's largely because a lot of surfers and other beachgoers tend to develop these pretty frequently. And that's because they're not just exposed to sunlight coming straight down on them from the sky, but that sunlight bounces off of the water and they get hit twice. And then you mix that along with salt water, wind, you get a lot of irritation, and that kind of causes the whole problem. I mean, that's like a huge potent mix for eye irritation. Now, as far as symptoms go for both a pinguecula and a pterygium, a lot of people may not even feel anything wrong. You may not even notice it until your eye doctor maybe mentions something. But usually if somebody feels anything at all, it just feels like kind of a mild irritation or something, kind of like a dryness of the eye. However, in case of something like a pinguecula, where somebody has a lot of sunlight exposure over a weekend and they have more dryness, it may cause aggravation of that pinguecula leading to what we call a pinguecculitis. And usually in that case, they look even more red for a short period of time and become a little bit more irritating. But with pterygiums, now remember pterygiums are often progressive and this tissue will grow over the surface of the eye. And when this happens, it can induce what's called corneal astigmatism. And this astigmatism is often irregular, which can cause blurred vision, which is often unstable. Now, if you've ever heard the term astigmatism before, but you're not entirely sure what that looks like, like, one of the first videos I ever did on this channel was about astigmatism. If you want to check out the video, I'll put links to that in the video description below. But uh, just thinking about it, it's been a while and I've come a long way in this YouTube thing, so I may decide to remake that video. And if and when that happens, I'll put an additional link to the newer version of that in the description below as well. But I know a lot of people have astigmatism. They're always worried about what that means. So again, check that out if you want to learn more. Now let's talk about treatments for both the pinguecula and the pterygium. Now thankfully, Treatment is usually pretty good, and it starts with just prevention. 
The number one thing to prevent getting either of these is to try to wear UV light protecting sunglasses. Pretty much every eye doctor is gonna tell you to do that. It's also good to consider wearing really wide brim hats when you're out in the sunlight, because that's gonna add an extra protective layer just to kind of shield the eyes and the skin. In addition, because of inflammation, irritation, wind, dust hitting the eye, you can also consider using lubricating eye drops just to add an extra layer of lubrication and flush any of those inflammatory proteins off of the tear film. Those are probably the best things that everybody should be doing just on a regular basis if they're spending a lot of time outside or in dusty, windy environments. If for some reason a pinguecula or a pterygium becomes inflamed and aggravated, your eye doctor may be able to prescribe a topical anti-inflammatory eye drop such as a steroid to help calm things down. And if something like that happens, it usually calms down over just a couple of weeks. Now with a pinguecula, because it doesn't obstruct your vision and doesn't really interfere with how the eyes function, it's really not too big of a deal, but if somebody does wanna get rid of them because they're unsightly, they don't like how they look on the eye, then they can be surgically removed. But that's usually not considered a medical necessity. It's all considered kind of an out-of-pocket uh, cosmetic procedure. However, for pterygiums, because a pterygium can progress across the eye, induce really irregular astigmatism and cause blurred vision and unstable vision, that can require surgical removal. Surgery to remove pterygiums is usually not too complicated but there is always that risk that they could come back. So it's oftentimes your doctor will continue to recommend UV light protecting sunglasses, lubrication. They may even recommend other prescription eye drops to help slow things down to prevent it from coming back. No matter what, if you do have further questions about either a pinguecula or pterygium or anything else about the eyes, certainly let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, if you think you have either of these and you're having issues, definitely contact a local eye care provider near you. Now, because UV light exposure does contribute to development of these, when you are wearing sunglasses, I, just a pro tip is to look on the side of the sunglass to make sure that it says that it has full UV light protection in it, or UV 400. If you're not sure of like good brands of sunglasses to look for, I do have other videos going over reviews about sunglasses. You can check that out over here if you want to learn a little bit more. Otherwise, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new. Otherwise, again, Dr. Allen here. Keep an eye on it. And we'll talk to you soon.